Okay, let's take a look at the first uh, use case of the Zener diode, and that is to create a reference voltage. You need some reference voltage or some medium voltage in some circuit or something. And so um, we're going to use a some supply. We're going to start out with, say, 10 volts. We'll have 10, 10 volts, and then uh, we're going to put our um, Zener diode in here. And this, this will be our VREF, okay? Okay, so in this particular case, we're gonna be using a 1N5230, which is a 4.7 volt Zener, all right? And uh, no, these aren't very, very accurate. It's gonna be around 4.7, but it's gonna be around that ballpark. Um, so, when we looked at this, this is the same diode we looked at in the curve tracer, and we found that we had this, uh, we had this breakdown, remember? And the breakdown came, and it had kind of a, a, a roundy bit, and then it was kind of, kind of straight. And we found that at about 10 milliamps, we were sort of in the straight regime. So we, if we get, get up to 10 milliamps, I think that's, that's a good idea, so we can put 10 milliamps through this. Now, one of the first things you might want to do is make sure that you don't blow up your Zener. So, how can you blow up your Zener? Well, it can get too hot. You can put too much current into it, right? And so, this particular one, if you look at the data sheet, it says it's 500 milli milliwatts, okay? So, it's, a, it's like a half watt device. So, if we want to calculate how many amps it can handle, uh, power equals voltage times current, okay? So current equals uh, power divided by voltage, all right? So what do we have? We have 0.5 watts, and 500 milliwatts is 0.5 watts, and we have 4.7, we have 4.7 volts. So let's do that calculation. All right, we have uh, 0.5, and we have 4.7, we have 106 milliamps, 100, 106 milliamps, 106 milliamps. So that's the maximum maximum current that this particular um, Zener diode can handle. All right, but we're only gonna be using it at 10 milliamps, so we're, we're way, way good, all right? So how do we make sure we're getting 10 milliamps into the device, right? Well, well we're gonna get 4.7 when we're done. So how many volts are across this resistor? 10 minus 4.7. Okay, that's how many volts are across the resistor. And what do we want? Well, we want 10 milliamps, okay? 0.01 amps. And so that will give us how much the resistor is. Remember, voltage equals current times resistance. So voltage divided by current is... Um, resistors. Ohmage. Remember the ohmage. All right. So um, let's do the calculation. 10, 4.7 subtract. So we're going to have 5.3 volts and we have uh, 0.01 amps, 10 milliamps. Okay. We're going to get 530 ohms. All right. So, um, I think 510 is a number, but uh, I have some 470, so we're going to put 470. Well, that means we'll put in a little bit more than we need, and that's okay. Um, so we're going to have 470 ohms, and this should give us a VREF. Now, um, it's important that you don't put any load on here, because you want all the current to be going through the diode. If any current goes someplace else, that's, that's going to be stolen from the, from, the, from the diode. But let's say that we're going to be using our VREF into an op amp, okay? And the op amp has a high impedance, and so we're not worried about loading this, this node yet. Okay, we'll get to that. But right now we're just creating a V reference, and we can use it with a high impedance device. All right, so let's hook this up, try it out. All right, so uh, here I have a 
470 ohm resistor and our Zener diode going to ground. Reverse biased, remember. All right, so let's measure its uh, let's measure its voltage. Make sure it's zenering, and we're getting 5.6. I mean, 4.6, which is close to 4.7. Like I say, they're not going to be totally accurate. You're just going to get something that's in the ballpark, and so uh, it is doing its job. All right. Now, are we really getting all of the currents and stuff that we want? One thing we can do is we can actually measure the voltage across your resistor, uh, because uh, Digital multimeters are not ground referenced, right? They're just floating. You can actually put them in a circuit and measure differential voltages. So we have 5.4 volts across the uh, resistor. And remember we calculated we'd have 5.3? Well, we have 5.4, that's fine. So we have 5.4 and uh, let's see, where's our calculator again? Okay, so we have 5.4 volts and we have 470 ohms. So we're putting in 11 and a half milliamps. That's great, 11 and a half milliamps is perfectly good for this application. So um, let's go back to our drawing. Okay, so that's the first use of a, a Zener diode, to create some type of reference, okay? Why would you want references? Well, because maybe you're creating a circuit where it's battery powered and the voltage will go up and down with the battery, but you wanna have some voltage inside the instrument that doesn't change with the power supply. So this 10 volts, maybe this is actually maybe a, a nine volt battery, okay? And uh, when it goes down to eight volts or when it goes, you know, maybe it goes up to 11 volts or I don't know, what the, whatever this battery is gonna do, it always makes sure that you've got 4.7 volts here as a reference and then, and then uh, your circuit will work better. Now, I said that this 4.7 isn't going to come out 4.7 every time. You take, you take a bunch out of a bag, they're all going to be a little bit different. But if you have a system where you use a Zener diode as a reference, you can always, you can always um, maybe put a potentiometer on the output, okay? And, uh, or maybe after you buffer it, probably better that you after you buffer it, put your VREF into a, into a, so a high impedance node. And then over here, put a, uh, put a potentiometer, okay, where you can dial it. So if you have one that's 4.6, one that's 4.65, one that's 4.68, whatever, you can dial it so that you always get four volts. Let's say your circuit is designed so this is a very, very accurate four volts. So your calibration routine would be to adjust this um, potentiometer so you always get an accurate four volts, okay? And you can look up in the literature all sorts of different ways to make sure that your Zener diode is very, very stable. This is just the simplest way to do it. But you can put a lot of circuitry around Zener diodes and make them a super, super accurate. I mean, you can make them really, really accurate. And you can buy more expensive Zener diodes too that are even more accurate than this the generic one like this. Uh, there are some that are more stable. Um, that are a little bit more expensive, but um, yeah. So anyway, this is the first use case using it as a voltage reference.